we're looking at again the, probably the what we call the uh, middle section of the Monument Valley Umtra site. Off to my uh, left here is where the main tailings pile used to be. And then down this uh, wash over here to the, my right is where we had some of that, a lot of that old uh, mill buildings. Uh, their the piping, the breeze was, used to be buried. And uh, part of the cleanup came to digging up that uh, debris and being hauled to a Mexican hat. Further up to the west there on the ledge is the, um, uh, some other structures where the main buildings also used to exist. And right now, the water to the well up there on the hill is where the clean water source is coming from. And then the well behind me is where the contaminated source is. And that one is uh, where the DOE stoler is pretty much using the uh, mixing uh, to help these uh, uh, greasewood and salt, four wing salt bush uh, grow. Uh, there's an issue that's still within this area. The contamination is pretty much selenium and uh, nitrate. In this, this general area is where we've got some uranium contamination in the well. And we're trying to address it uh, because of two issues. The one issue is that the source of contamination is from uh, the uranium site that we're going to visit next. The second uh, issue is that the source is here on site and we're helping uh, we're going to drill some additional wells to determine that source if it is actually coming from this area. DOE Stoller is going to come back in here and do six additional wells and we're going to be monitoring that as they're digging or as they're drilling whatever sample they're bringing up, we're going to be monitoring it right on hand. If it did come from an AML site that was outside this area, then and the stoler is saying that it, they're not responsible for the green, for the cleanup of the groundwater. So that's where we're trying to get these things area clarified. We know that some of the uh, tailings and all the metal debris that was buried in here is still, they didn't clean up, do enough cleanup to where is some of it is probably still buried. And that is the source, contributing source, to this well. Do you compete for funding with each other? Is that part of your issue of territory, or is it just... We're not competing for funding. It's just that they want to save money while we're trying to save money, too. So, right. So we're trying to say, well, we want you to finish the cleanup here on this site. And while they're saying, well, it's your problem because it comes from the mine site. Right. We use your money to clean up the site. That's kind of the issue right now. Uh -huh. Ask me where those trailers are. That used to be our access control point for when we we're doing the remediation of this whole site. And from there, we had a deep contamination facilities. And from there, it is 18 miles to Mexican Hat to where the disposal cell is. The oxide that 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 uh, residue that came off the the process, you know, through the milling process, it got embedded into the metal. And they even built a structure in Montezuma Creek. That used to be a factory, and when we took surveys on that building, they were actually in, they were actually embedded in the contaminated or material was embedded into the, the beams. Later on, uh, somehow that issue got uh, where another company from Monticello was able to buy that building. And they removed that contamination off site, but they were aware that that those beams were contaminated with with uh, poor milling material. Do you still think there's a, a bit of that out there? With there is probably still out there. Uh, every once in a while, somebody reports a, a, you know, I have brought this material from that site, and then we go out and investigate it. And sometimes we do find material like that, uh -huh. especially the old hoses, uh, high pressure hoses, uh, some of the metal pipes, and then the I beams also. And are you when when that's discovered? Is anybody? Uh um, I mean, is there some kind of policy that kicks in that, oh, you're contaminated or, or you just warn them and and it's up to them to kind of... Right now, uh, um, AML's point is we just survey it, mm -hmm. give them the documentation, and they turn it over to Navajo EPA. U.S. or under UMTRA, all the vicinity properties are supposed to have been cleaned up and that their, their program or the the original um, UMTRA, their law is expired, so they're not going out and doing 
reassessing the vicinity properly or doing additional cleanup at all. So everything goes back to Navajo EPA and, and US EPA. And, and does, does uh, Navajo or US EPA come in and say, well, we have to close this site because it's contaminated or do they go that far and, or? No, they're just pretty much right now, for an example, let's say there's a, uh, if there is a concern or a, a vicinity property that is contaminated, they will just go in there and tell them people, you know, this is what we found. And then again, like uh, pretty much the contaminant home structure yesterday, they will work with USAP and determine if it's a, a high enough risk to where they get a replacement and then remove the, the, the material mm -hmm. and dispose of it where the way they want, I guess. But so I imagine people and factories and businesses would be reluctant to kind of close down and move if they don't have any kind of financial incentive sometimes. Right? Yeah. That's probably. That. So right now, as far as I know, Navajo, BEPA, and USEPA, they've been disposing their, of the material from the contaminated homes somewhere in the Farmington area at a uh, uh, designated disposal site. So they've been hauling all the material off site. There's not, everything's been disposed or been hauled off to the off reservation, let me put it that way. <laughs>